Today we will find out what people would experience in the distance 1968 if they heard punk rock. Now we will talk about the KLH Model 5 speakers produced today, which in fact are modern reincarnation of their hit model of 1968. First off, let's talk a little about the KLH brand. This is an old American manufacturer of acoustics and headphones. The company was founded in 1958 in Cambridge, Massachusetts by an outstanding engineer Henry Kloss and his partners Malcolm Lowe and Joseph Hoffman, whose names are immortalized in the name of this brand. Interestingly, a few years before KLH, young Henry Kloss, together with his teacher Edgar Wilcher, founded another well-known innovative company, Acoustic Research, in which Wilcher realized his ideas of acoustic suspension loudspeaker technology. You'll be surprised, but in those days bus reflex speakers dominated on the market as they do now. The reason for that is that by that moment the industry just didn't know how to make silly speakers properly. But acoustic research and wheelchair with class changed everything dramatically. Put it simply, the main recipe for success was to build speakers with soft suspension so that they could use the air spring of a closed cabinet. This key idea contributed to the spread of sealed speakers in the 70s and 80s. Meanwhile, KLH has also made its mark on Hi-Fi as a pioneering company with the release of the world's first highly selective fan desktop radio Model 8, the first full-range electrostatic loudspeaker Model 9, highly acclaimed by the audiophile community and named by Stereophile magazine one of the 12 best loudspeakers ever built. Next, the first portable record player called the Model 11 and the first consumer reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder with Dolby noise reduction, the Model 40. KLH was so successful that within five years since its foundation they became the largest audio manufacturer with over 30,000 speakers sold annually. Then, in 1964, the company was sold to the Singer Corporation, which launched a series of ownership changes. Already in 1970, Electra Audio Dynamics took the company over, and in 1982 they were acquired by the Japanese conglomerate Kyocera, which moved production overseas. In 1989 KLH again found American owners and in 2017 it was acquired by David Kelly, an audio industry veteran and former president of Klipsch, whose company still owns KLH. KLH was relaunched and got a new successful life owing to this man. After the purchase, Kelly said, KLH is one of the most storied and revered audio brands in the world, founded by one of the most iconic engineers in the history of consumer electronics. I'm taking the brand back to its roots, to Henry's original mission, to build world-class loudspeakers and radios at affordable prices. I have no idea what radios he mentioned, but they definitely make speakers. So, the Model 5 is the reincarnation of one of the company's best-selling models, the flagship of this line. These are classic-looking, old-school three-way loudspeakers performed in sealed enclosure. Yes, these are one of the few modern speakers that don't have a phase inverter and are generally built by according to the patterns of the golden era of audio, but with materials, technical capabilities and accuracy of the 21st century. They look like they flew straight out of the 68. Some say that inside the box you could find the manual and two tickets to Woodstock smelling like something what the Grateful Dead smoked. And inside of them their inner walls are papered with posters of Hendrix. But no, there's no such thing unfortunately. The speakers smell like a new thing which is already priceless for a product with such an old school look. What we have here? Not very large, but heavy MDF cabinet with natural veneer finish. Each of these speakers weighs 44 pounds, they are generally very rigid. 
and slant riser bases made of 14 gauge steel that create a 5 degree slope are included into the package. Whatever one may say, they look amazing on these stands. I personally feel a surge of endorphins looking at this. There is something in these aesthetics that makes audiophiles' hearts beat hard. All the drivers are placed on a contrasting black front panel with exposed aluminum flangers and screws, which helps to create this vintage look. Although the grills here are magnetic, so there are no holes and other technological trifles that are usually found on the facades of such speakers. As for me, I would keep the vintage pins at the grills and on the facade. But look how beautiful the grills are! They are made of acoustically transparent coarse linen and each has a strap to help dismantle them. I like this small but nice detail. Let's move on to the drivers. On top, covered with a metal grill, a 1-inch tweeter with an aluminum dome and soft rubber suspension, and immediately below it there are two drivers of similar design with classic paper cones, a 4-inch mid-range driver in its own closed volume, and a mighty 10-inch woofer that you can't take your eyes off. Drivers are in aluminum baskets, which flangers we see on the facade, and a special reverse roll rubber suspension is used in the design. It helps to extend the stroke of the cones and generally contributes to a more uniform movement. By the way, on the rear panel of the speakers you can find an interesting thing. Between the terminals there is a three-position acoustic balance control switch that controls the response of high and medium frequencies. Leaping ahead, in this particular room I like the middle position most of all. There are only two terminals, no biamping allowed here, it's old school guys. A second order crossover is installed. It has iron core coils and high quality Mylar capacitors. Crossover frequencies are 380 Hz and 2850 Hz. Also, in the specs we'll find frequency response from 42 to 20,000 Hz, sensitivity 90.5 dB, impedance 6 ohms, dropping to 3.5 ohms near the low frequency bound. Generally, nothing terrible for a conventional amplifier. Speaking of the amp, I thought it would be right if such speakers were paired with a tube amplifier. And here I have a very interesting tube amp from Kain. The model is called CS55A. This is an integrated amp with an output stage on KT88 tubes. A very sleek device, superbly built, looking and sounding great. And most importantly, it creates a perfect match with these speakers. Together they sound tremendously. So, how do they sound? I started with a great new album by Andrew Bird, the sound of which fits these speakers perfectly. The paper of their cones instantly relaxes and turns you on at the same time. This sound is rich, detailed and juicy. But the main thing that bribed me is the amount of air and the way the vocals are delivered. It's just beyond praise. You have warmth, rich timbers and a lot of details. Everything is an absolute excess. You can't stop listening to it, it's so exciting. This is exactly what I call the right audiophile presentation. Warm, soft and detailed sound at the same time. That is all kinds of string plugs, sharp stick claps, all this is extremely impressive, in particular at the level of subtle details. Despite its modest look, the tweeter here is very good. It produces a lot of finest detail. It's not soft in tone, but it doesn't sound harsh and dry like often metal tweeters do. You know, it's such a good neutral setting that doesn't go to any extremes. You'll understand this when you hear how Bird's violin sounds on the Lone Didion song. It's just the perfect presentation. You hear every single string in detail and at the same time your ears remain absolutely safe. And after all, this sound is quite colored, a little warm, with a slight vintage flare, if you will. Still, we have tubes here. And it was great, but I decided that I needed to take these speakers out of their comfort zone and put on a great band that chose the dreamy name The Murder City Devils. Noisy, dirty, early 2000s Seattle punk rock hitting you with KT88 fan paper speakers shouldn't in theory be the best material for a setup like this, 
but I have to say it's not that bad. On the contrary, everything is very good. But I had to turn the rear switch to the minimum, otherwise the treble became too strong and a little top harsh for me. This wasn't the fault of the speakers, uh, but the record itself, and this switching made everything better. The speakers are quite easy on the dirt this record has, and they don't bring forward anything I don't want to hear. But the Model 5 is very dynamic and punchy, which means uh, that they perfectly convey the expression of punk and rock music. The guitars in KLH sound are very well articulated and the drums are biting and punchy. They constantly make you shake your head. KLH attack as if you have larger and much more sophisticated speakers in front of you. The Model 5 are reasonably good at jazz. This time I recommend you a new album by jazz pianist Gerald Clayton. His calm, precise music is shown here in such a way as if you close your eyes, you willingly believe the presence of the musicians in the room. These speakers always build clear, well-formed stage, where each musician is well distinguished in the canvas, and the subtleties and small details that are so important in jazz are well preserved. There's enough bass here to feel the impressiveness of the drum beats, and the double bass in the background isn't lost. Indeed, at the level of minus 10 dB, the lower limit reaches an impressive 32 Hz. And also, the bass here is confident and tight. It doesn't drown out the solo instruments and doesn't go beyond permitted boundaries at all. The middle range is very open here. There is a lot of it, but not more than required. The speakers breast the middle range, from which the solo instrument, and especially the Clayton's piano, shimmer beautifully, floating in the waves of accompaniment. Absolutely stunning. But the biggest delight I experience on the vocals of S.G. Goodman. Her new album just makes you fall in love with simple music, which is essentially the soundtrack to life itself. The quivering trembling of her voice is subtly transmitted by fives and instantly resonates with you, leaving you totally covered with goosebumps. It's hard not to love it all, especially when it's so beautifully recorded. And these speakers know exactly what to do so that you appreciate the quality of the recording. There are no extremes in their sound, they aren't lazy, but they don't try to seem like super audiophile monitors either. Model 5 is all about the right balance. That's why they were a hit then and probably will be a hit now. They are what each of us needs. They mix all the aesthetics with modern technologies and ideas about quality and rich, shining but comfortable, cozy sound with enough precision and detail in sufficient proportions. All in all, you get the best of both worlds. The warm tube aesthetics of the golden era of audio and the poise and precision of high res. And all of this at a very reasonable price. Yeah.